Hello, welcome and welcome back. This is Jacob and today we are gonna be continuing the narration and character voice acting for the main story of Arknights. Episode 13 is here, aka chapter 13, the Verpool, that is passion. And we shall finally, after the usual amount of months of waiting, finally continue this journey today with this part one of this narration for this current new episode. So, before we begin, considering this is part one, as per usual, I do need to rattle off a couple of things before we start. Number one would be, as you can see, just like last time, I have not yet read anything, so I am pre-recording this before I start uh, my usual journey through this, and I'm gonna leave you off later with uh, future me, who will uh, both voice act and narrate through this thing. But before we do so, the usual song and ends. To anybody who is new to Arknights and to this channel as well, if you're bumping into it through this very episode, hello and welcome, hope you enjoy your stay. And for those of you who are already familiar with uh, the way I do things here, you know the drill, the timestamp is down in the comment section below, you can just hop to the uh, fresh part and start off your journey with this new episode, especially if you're binge watching this through the playlist. Enjoy! Uh, but, coming back to anybody who is new to Arknights, first and foremost, if you are not uh, caught up with the main story up until this point, uh, this is gonna be one, the one and only place uh, throughout Arknights in general where I'm gonna uh, hard say, do go through the story up until you reach this point, because uh, this is like opening the book in the middle and trying to puzzle together <laughs> if you if you're not familiar with uh, with the material, that is. So, honest recommendation is to get caught up before you continue with this episode. And luckily for you, there are several methods to do so if you don't have time to read yourself or want to bypass huge sections of the game. Number one, there is the anime. If you're someone who just started off with Dark Knights, just use the anime to bypass the first six episodes of the in-game story, aka the first six chapters, essentially. And you can continue on on your own journey then from chapter 7 onwards, or you can just keep on listening through this channel and the playlist that is provided here in the description of the video. So, there are quite a lot of options. And you can treat this channel as an audiobook on top of it, so, you know, you can do something else alongside while you are just listening. Now, the other point would be uh, the usual homework. Considering we have several stories, side and intermezzi stories, that are connected very intrinsically to not just the main story as of current, but also to uh, pretty much a story that is currently only available in the Chinese clan, but will be with us in a couple of months from now. And yes, I'm talking about the Babo story, and no, I have no idea what specifically is in the story. I mean, I can guess what's in it. Uh, at least one point should be covered in it, but I have no idea about anything else, nor do I want to know anything else. And this brings me to the other thing. Uh, which is, for anybody who will be leaving comments on this episode and all the future episodes, please keep in mind, do not spoil anything that comes uh, both in the future with future updates, but also not anything that is not covered yet in the episode that you're currently watching and listening to. If you know what is happening, keep it to yourself until we get to that point, right? Uh, and that is also for my own personal peace, because as these episodes are gonna go live on the channel, I will not know what is happening past the episode you are also watching when it goes live. So, uh, you know, I don't want to see the spoilers. Oh, it's already, <laughs> it's already a uh, daunting task to avoid any spoilers for this game. Uh, but yeah, anyway, thank you very much for your cooperation, is all I can say. But yeah, coming back to the stories that are connected to the main story. Two of them, plus one bonus story, can be found in the intermezzi section here in the menu. Number one would be Darknet's Memoir, a story that is as important to the current main story as it will be important to potentially the bubble story when it drops in the future. So this is like your priority number one homework. If you have not read this one yet or uh, listened to this one yet, again, uh, all of these stories that I'm gonna that I'm talking about here and showing you are also voice acted and done here on the channel, you could just look at the description and they're literally all there at the very top, so just go through them at your own leisure. But yeah, Darknet's Memoir, 
story mostly around W, but also around Ines and Horderer, where you're gonna pretty much learn about them for the first time, uh, as the story itself is set several years before the main story, but also touches upon uh, Bubble, Theresa, uh, calls it the old pre-amnesia doctor, and, uh, uh, and uh, mm, for a brief moment shows us a tiny someone, is all I'm gonna say. Then we have A Walk in the Dust, a story that is set pretty much mostly around Calcit, even though a uh, Passenger also appears in the story, but this is a story mostly around her, uh, and a portion of her life leading up to joining Babel and Th Theresa later. And uh, it is quite quite a tale, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Enjoy it, it will definitely put some character onto our stoic stoic old, old old well, right? Now, the bonus story in here would be Lone Trail, and I'm pointing it out as a bonus story because this one is set after the events of the Londinium arc, uh, sometime later, no specific time given, but sometime later in Colombia, and delivers quite a lot of bombshells when it comes to uh, certain characters that are very intrinsic to the main story of Arkness and just the world building itself. There is a lot in the story, it is a huge one. Uh, if you check the playlist that I provided in the description of the video, you'll see what I mean. It is very big, very long, but also very good. It takes a bit to take off, but it needs to build the ground to uh, for the launch, rather. Anyway, the other two stories that I need to mention are not available uh, neither here in the Intermezzi section or the Side Story section. For those, you will have to go to the Archives. Now, if you're an old player, you probably have them unlocked. One of them, or rather, even if you are a new player, one of them you can unlock, because it is right here. Vigilo is a interme sorry, not Intermezzi, is a vignette side story. This is a collection of side stories, and they're all pretty much set after the episode 8 of uh, the main story concluded, and they're all centered around the Doctor, their past, their connections, and uh, are, once again, pretty much like Darknet's memoir and certain other things, setting up the future. Especially when it comes to Bubble in the future, probably. This is a very interesting one, because, once again, the Doctor is not just your average self-insert protagonist. The Doctor is their own character when it comes to this story. The other story can be found here, which is just pretty much your archived version of the side stories of the game. And it is Firelight Casts. Now, this story will become available, if you're a new player, you probably missed it because this was live last year, but it will become available through the rerun that will happen later this year, or rather, probably in like two, roughly two to three months from now, I can't really tell right now when specifically, but this story is set pretty much after the events of Episode 9, aka okay, Chapter 9 of the main story conclude, and follows along along Chapter 10 and 11, essentially. It will also prepare you for the ground that is uh, probably this very chapter, we're gonna touch upon that in a moment, uh, but yeah, it is a journey for read of self-discovery, and, uh, well, stuff that's, that has happened with her throughout Episode 9, but also her sister Eblana, their connection, their past, and a lot more, so I can only recommend going through this one, because uh, we're definitely gonna be seeing more of one of them, at least. Now, before we head finally off into our story for today, again, apologies for this, this long intro, but I do like to do these, <laughs> so I cannot help myself. Anyway, before we continue, uh, I wanted to quickly ramble off the things that I said at the end of the previous part. Like the expectations and stuff that was left off, that was insinuated, yada yada, you know. You know the spiel. Predictions and stuff like that. What might be happening through this chapter, what I'm expecting in this chapter, or I'm hoping that they're gonna be uh, touched upon this in this very chapter. And uh, considering, uh, to be just upfront here, I did see the animated uh, trailer for this, which definitely confirmed or denied certain things that I'm about to say. I will, however, still rattle them off as I would have not seen them at all. I'm just repeating what I said at the end of last episode. 
So, first and foremost, last time we left off with the Nachtzer army being literally shown to us and uh, the big boy marching his, his forces into Londinium. So, pretty much obvious prediction was we'll have to deal with them somehow, or they will have to be dealt somehow with. We'll see what happens, but they're there. <laughs> now, the next point was uh, the Matsi. The Matsi obviously died at the end of the last chapter, and uh, that is still probably one of my <laughs> most funniest, but also most badass moments of uh, the previous of the story so far. Probably, I mean, what what else is there to say besides Logos literally, uh, literally debating the shit out of the Matsi into well death? <laughs> but we were also left with. Uh, the words of that while the Damazi cluster has died, two new Damazi have been born. And I left off with the question of, are we gonna see them? Are we gonna meet them? Have they literally been born as babies? Or have they been reborn as adults? Are they gonna be friends, foes, uh, one or the other? I guess we'll have to see. The other one was a bit of a odd one, but it was mentioned and it was mentioned through a certain NPC that appeared through the last story. A woman by the name of Ermengarde, who seems to be aligned with Theresa, as she is also a uh, species of uh, Sarkas, but... a race of Sarkas, rather. But, uh, the words that were used during some of the conversations happening insinuate that her kind can manipulate some kind of dimensional portals, travel, something? Something into another plane of existence? Which is quite wild. It is not too wild for this world, after all, but still, it is quite the wild thing to just hear. So... As I literally... As I literally wrote in my notes here, it literally just says Dimension hopping shenanigans? Question mark? Exclamation mark? So yeah, are we gonna see something about that? Are we gonna be hopping for a brief moment in another, into another plane of existence? Uh, I guess we'll see. I, I have no idea. Now, the other one was, again, another thing that was literally... Pretty much all of the stuff that I'm mentioning is literally from the end. Uh, the other one, again, from the very end of the story was... Talula and Nine are there with a couple of uh, old reunion forces to pretty much find their companions that are kind of also isolated and trapped in Londinium because of what is happening and to pull them out of there, essentially. And we've met some of them and seen some of them during the story. But one thing that was left off at the end of the story was Talula essentially being somehow interested in Eblana upon hearing, hearing or sort of feeling her? Like, th there was a weird, weird sentence there at the end, which kind of insinuates that, that either she shows interest in Eblana, and uh, pff, uh, is something gonna happen between those two? I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see what will happen if anything happens specifically. Maybe they'll meet, maybe they'll just have a stare-down contest, like a, <laughs> I show you my battle power, I, I, I will show you mine. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, the other one is Siege. Obviously, Siege is a big character for this story, after all, and I do wonder if we're gonna finally... I mean, we've had the push for Siege in the last episode, and I do hope that we don't need any more pushing to do and see that she finally picks up the mantle of leadership. Because, after all, she is an Aslan. So, I do hope that something happens, and I hope that something also happens with the Sigh of Kings. So far, we haven't seen anything from the sword. Um, maybe it needs the scabbard that is not reunited with the sword yet. Maybe it needs something else. Maybe, the, maybe like I said, maybe it doesn't carry any power at all and is literally just a symbol or a key for some kind of mechanism. But we'll... I guess we'll see again. I do hope that Siege finally, finally, in this chapter... Uh, awakens to something and, you know, does something, essentially. Because uh, that would be that would be rad. And now, the final thing. The very corpse that I will drag after myself as long as I have to. Well, last time we did see the, uh, the Steam Knight up here, 
And then we cut away from the Steam Knight and the battle that he ran into where Horn was present with her forces. And we haven't seen anything else. We have literally not seen anything else from that whole whole scene. They, he just ran in, or it just ran in, and was super aggro and engaging in combat. And that was it. It cut away. So, my good old, good old corpse that I keep dragging behind me, called Allerdale. Like I said before, we have not seen anything or heard anything that she died, just the door closing on her goddamn ass, and now the Steam Knight is out. How did he come out? Did someone open the door? Did Ellerdale open the door? Did the thing that I I think I said at one point, did the Steam Knight suddenly realize who Ellerdale is and didn't kill her, and the two of them are cooperating, and she let him out? I don't know, maybe she's piloting the thing, and we just didn't see it. Uh, that would be kind of sick. But anyway, uh, I will drag the corpse of Cold Ellerdale, giggity, uh, behind myself, uh, until we get someone to confirm uh, the body count. Until then, she's Schrodinger's Ellerdale. She's either dead or, or, or alive in the box that I keep dragging behind myself. But yeah, anyway, with this said, and I know it's been a long intro, so apologies once more, I will head you, or her, hand you off to future me, who will introduce you how much of the story we're gonna be covering today. So, take it away, future me. Alright then, thank you past me for that long-winded uh, intro, once again, uh, apologies for that, but I had to say a couple of things before we go into... I usually only do these long intros when I'm excited for something, so apologies. Anyway, before we head off, as you can see, this is gonna be our coverage for today, cutscene number one and stages number two and three. Uh, furthermore, as per usual, we're gonna be covering new enemies that are being added on each stage, uh, the normal kind of thing. We're gonna go through this thing on the adverse difficulty, which is the highest difficulty you can do this on, so we get uh, elite enemies and special and stuff like that, so we pretty much get all the coverage done in one go as we go through the story. And the other thing is, like the previous chapters, we have the little uh, booklet here in the top left, which will be updating when you pass certain stages. Uh, this time around it updates for the first time on stage 13-5, and therefore I will be opening it up for the first time when we get to 13-5, because 13-5 is also where you get our welfare unit for the chapter, uh, which is Delphine. But until then, uh, I will leave that closed, and we are going to be covering that once we get to 13.5 and can include the first story, but it pretty much functions like it did previously, which means you beat everything on the high highest difficulty, you get all the rewards from both the stages and the extra requirements out of that book. But yeah, anyway, let us begin our journey on 13-1. Titled across the battlefield's line. One war can wear many faces. The senior professor of classics to the Victorian National University, Samuel Seuss, once likened the ample library of Sir Casagra to the holy trees upon Londinium's fringes. In these essences of knowledge, in these long shadows of history, we never fail to find parallels to how we ourselves have gone, and to how we will go. Recorded are the epics and philosophies, one by one file away our mythologies and theories. Humble scholars fill page to page with their wisdom and diligence, each laureate poet a bookshelf to themselves. Some day the storm will pass, for hope can never truly die. What is formed of these accounts in ink, that is our civilization in all its pride. Sir Casagra was a decent jailmate. We debated over many a question through our wall, the wall that was perhaps the sole reason our time came to an end, but how his realizing I was a sarcas. He simply took me as a Victorian, one too mired in introspection at that. 
I still remember his last words to me before being dragged from that neighboring cell. In any time of trouble, a proud Victorian need only return there, and the winter of our discontent will once again feel not so endless after all, and the coming of spring, the closest thing. Friend, you need only return there. You're SOL. I tried those already. Even the papers, the good copskin stuff. These books ain't burning. Why call it paper if it's copskin anyway? Why don't we say writing skin or something? I don't know. Screw us! This fire just ain't happening. We've got all smoke and no warm soup pot. <laughs> soup. This stuff's just water with a couple stems and scraps with dust in. You know what? This is all their fault. The sneering royal court shit has have us out here doing all the hard and dirty work, snatching Londoners across to work their factories across the entire city. And they won't even give us a hot bottle of something for the trouble. Captain said we've officially seized Londinium now. The defense forces got disbanded. That, uh, let you guys out. The Liberi. Well, I'm starting to regret not going with W. Goddamn loony woman. Whatever. Probably wouldn't turn out any better if I did. What are all these books anyway? Could be discount catalogs for all I care. Why would some old feline collect this many discount catalogs? <laughs> what is it with you in questions? Who gives a shit what goes on in a Victorian's head? Still, never seen an old man cry his eyes out like that. Are you watching? Got his embroidered lapel all gunked up with his own snot. <laughs> hey, step out of it. Get me some more books. The fire's about to go out. What are you doing? Uh, reading them. What reading? You ain't literate! And all this shit's in Victorian anyway. Well, there's pictures in here too. Look at these drawings. There's a feline girl here giving this boy a real slap. What do you think's the deal with these two? Cheating, I figured. Anything more interesting? No, all the other pictures are dull. Just one of these things is a couple hundred pages. How many books do we have here? And the thinner ones over there. They only put a few words on each line, so you have to keep looking down for the next one. What is it Victorians are writing in these? Do the lands really have that much worth writing books about? This one, this one, and that one. All kept in these beautiful glass cases, and they're all different kinds. Here's another possibility. Victorians are so stinking rich, they'll pay to bind their own toilet paper. <laughs> Maybe. Why don't we have books of our own? They fit through these things so much the edges are curled. Maybe we do. You know, you hear how the liches are a bunch of nutjobs who hold themselves up in libraries. No one see them for years and years. That's how long. Not that my ass cares. Hot soup to drink means more than any of that. Yeah, the days just blend together. These books just blend together. Even if I can't read, I know it. There's never one new thing under the sun. A thousand years ago, we macheted people to death. Now we've got more efficient weapons. A thousand years in the future, we'll be flying through the sky and using a... Pff, I don't know, clouds and stars? To keep on killing and killing. You know, if we put houses on the moons, plant our own food, maybe we won't have to keep fighting like this in the future. Maybe something even bigger will happen, and everyone will stop wanting to be up in arms? <laughs> Never mind, let's get the next book burning. Sometimes I wonder if the work I'm doing is just me satisfying myself. Just trying to prove to myself I'm still one of the awake. What Ina said, really. It keeps me up at night, and nothing else. After all, Castle is not going to be overflowing with people who can use a printing press.
You need to get up to speed ASAP, boy. This isn't the classroom. I'm not obligated to teach you the ropes. You could just run your butt back to the countryside. How many more months is your internship? I'm very sorry, sir. I just wanted to be scrupulous about my writing. Scrupulous? I don't want a goddamn catastrophology thesis. I want our circulation beating our union threats at Cavalierki Sports, and I want them beat them hard, 24-7. If you're the office workers passing by the newsstand, or the intercity net news subscribers, is an essay titled Victoria Makes Massive Strides in Catastrophology going to pry your cash loose? But don't you think Sarka's Destroy Victoria is a little... <laughs> you know, for a headline. You think our readers want the truth? Even the Central Journal's top-tier subscribers aren't asking for the truth. You need to spoon-feed them worry, fear, feelings of superiority, slightly leading emotional appeal followed by hard verdicts. And then they'll want more. Then they'll pluck cash out of their pockets. Then you'll guarantee your goddamn job. Who is it? You know what time it is right now. What? <laughs> How long ago did that new courier truck leave with our plates? Uh, a half an hour ago. Is there some kind of breaking news from Victoria? No, you idiot! Move! We're going to the printers now. They should still be on shift. We can still make it. We'll give the chief editor a call. You'll write me a new lead article ASAP. Front page material. Uh, on what? My informant says Viviana, the candle knight, no one nightclub, long AWOL, She's formally announcing retirement. Tomorrow! Quick, we need to be the first body in all of Casimir's to report on this! I'll approve to the GCC, just which rose paper editorial really matters most. Then, uh, what about Victoria and the Shard? Who cares, boy? A million things a day happen on Terra. And we only need the most meaningful scoops out of them all. Remember that. Call a cab already. Uh, okay. Come to mention, sir, there'd always been unlicensed devils around here running their own taxis. Have you noticed them kind of vanish lately? The history of Sarkas, the history of war itself. It is a lamentable fact. One I am loyal to. Yet still, I attempt to prove to them that slaughter aside, there are events about us worth being remembered, reflected on. Upon this land, those events that had the luck to be written off assiduously, those can be counted on one's fingers. And yet, even if I record these past affairs... This isn't what we agreed on. No stock means no stock, Tona. What you see is what you get. All originium explosives are sold out. And the weapons I ordered? Are you expecting us to walk into that cave teeming with originium slugs in giant gloom pincers and heaven knows what other monsters and just tackle them with our bare hands? That's your problem to deal with, not mine. Listen here, you've been cruising the entire black market for the last three weeks and managed to get, what, half a dozen weapons? Less. What mercenary squad could possibly snatch everything up? Are they insane? Even Solar Valley Industries couldn't possibly buy this much a... Was it a Lord Amir? So which sad sack Lord Amir got ripped off this time? I want a hint. We'll divert around. D no, no Lord Amir. There was such a mystery I couldn't say. It was probably the Pasha. Uh, not just one. It might even be... What the hell are you feeding me? Pashas on a shopping spree at the black market? And more than one? That's impossible. They have their own channels and multiple buying weapons in huge bulk. Do you know what that even entails? All I've got is a blind guess. They went through several layers of middlemen and used some foreign firms to keep their hands extra clean. Every purchase happened to be some quantity that wouldn't raise suspicion. So if someone called coincidence, it might just pass. But who in Sargon could ever monopolize all this so perfectly? Hmm. Hey, buddy. Got my rides and supplies sorted? Yep. 
War cars, rations, water, tents, all good to go. Good. Here's the cash. When the hell did Spacer get that wealthy? No, I hear he and his band of mercs are planning to ditch Sargon. They rustled up all the money they have to head someplace else. Columbia, probably, or Victoria. What more Devil Merc's career is changing than usual, I feel like. What for? Don't all of Spacer's relatives live in Sargon? Does he not care about his old Baba with the broken leg? Who knows? I've never been able to make heads or tails of how these devils think. Maybe they're just sick enough of desert and rainforest. They want to switch up their surroundings now. <laughs> that be best case. It's been like this recently. Things just getting weird levels of complicated left and right. Makes no sense to me at all. Uh, damn it, the only thing my grandpa ever had to figure out was which Lepori bees shorthorn ran slowest and make the best dinner for us. They didn't hit this many setbacks in their time, did they? It'll be us rural Sargon people just feeling it coming. It? Just like a shorthorn, once it gets intense, it'll knock you flat. Even if I write of these, write of our dialects and our recipes, of peasants' wives' songs, of our chief courier's great drunken boasts, of Romans in the trenches, of graffiti in the ruins, these things in the face of our suffering pale beyond mention. They are reduced even to an irony of sorts, seeming to inform my readers, if I even have any, that we best served using violence to wrest them back. That was never my intent, even so I have no right to be serving you my verdict. That messenger should be here by now. Did some fanciful girl steal his heart on the way again? I've had enough of his tardy excuses by now. Isn't there anyone who can drill into his head just how much his job matters? He won't be coming. Postal messenger Arthur Morrison is dead. That, that, that dead? Executed on grounds of treason. T treason? Who in the land are you? I'm doing my job. Go operate, and you'll make both our lives a lot easier. Tell me what you know about Arthur Morrison. Please. I hardly knew him, really. Just that he was the only postal messenger around who'd make the run to Londinium. Uh, my own daughter goes to university there, so uh, him and I only exchanged the odd word. Uh, he was a treasonist. Was he taking Sarka's help? My girl wrote to me how Londinium has been littered with them lately. That wretch! I knew he was a scoundrel at the first moment! Trust him to gang up with the devils. He got what he deserved. No. Our comprehension is that Arthur Morrison served horses. Uh, horses? But, but... And you were his co-worker, Mr. Vesley Rowett. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> Sir, surely you must be joking. I'm a feline born and bred. I've been planting potatoes here all my life. I couldn't speak your word of Orson. Uh, there must be some misunderstanding here. I know potatoes couldn't afford your daughter's tuition at the Victorian National University. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> If you insist on being stubborn, I can free you of your other arm, too. Don't waste my time. No resistance of yours is meaningful. <sighs> so the rumors were true. That Ursus was right. The name has been occupied. Uh, for the past month, I haven't gotten a single word from the place. Not even the tiniest hearsay. Uh, those goddamn sarcas. They disgrace us. They murder us. They enslave us. And you, you self-professed protectors of Victoria, what have you done? Uh, don't you have anyone in Londinium? A dear friend? A father? A mother? A child? 
<laughs> of course, of course, you're bigger than that. You've got to pull them out safe, <laughs> yes you do. <laughs> but as peasants class? No, we thought we could send our children out to great old Londinium, to the heart of Victoria, where surely you did grow beyond our wildest expectations. <laughs> and now? <laughs> <laughs> They're laborers to the Sarkas, slave to them, in our own country's capital. Those devils are turning Victoria's tempest on Victoria itself, and you people are just letting it happen. You could never hope to grasp Victoria's motives with your shallow insight. All you need to do is take me to your intellect exchange. As if I would... Excuse me? An ashen lance bursts forth from his body. The man facing him thrusts his hands out and attempts to allay the fear of his chest being run through. His hands, the instant they touch the deep impurity, are warped and withered. <sighs> From afar comes a wrecked breath, spine chilling. It's me. Cheshire's flowers bloom for spring. Close all comms. If I haven't initiated contact again in 15 minutes, abandon this town immediately. May I have this strength? Not to drown in the flower scent. In the height of midsummer, he exhales frigid mist. He cannot cover, he cannot shrink. He must establish communications with the opposite side, in Victoria's name. Where is it? <sighs> Followed by an unknown code word. He must not look back. They must not catch sight of each other. He only hopes his adversary is fully aware to abide by the rules of this little game. He can tether a beast, but not a poltergeist. Snowflakes whirls about, jet black, sinking into the soil of Victoria. A long, slender shadow stretches out from underfoot. He knows it's right behind him. How close? His heart pounds like thunder. Black breaths clamor at his back. All around him, dead silence. <sighs> The Trilby Asher, speaking in Gaulish. I need an explanation. Ninety-three. Followed again by an unknown code word. The blade responding back in Gaulish. So, this operation has not received royal assent. We will not pardon any breach of authority. The treasonists have all been executed. Over. Understood. We've never met before. He's gone. Sir Trilby Asher, our surveillance picked up... Your surveillance picked up nothing. The fact he could enter and leave us alive, that declares where Victoria and Ursus stand. All this needs to be reported directly to the Duke. Wesley Rowett was cornered and took his own life. The mission is over. Seems to me like the armies and the Emperor aren't on the same page. 
But any action we take could succeed in bringing about their conciliation. They haven't settled on their plans yet. But their empire, their fear, that will make their decision for them. Tell me, has my work fallen among the Firewood too? Are all Sarkas' lives, save for being lit of flame, devoid of any meaning? Then why do I still insist on recording? Why do I still insist on writing? Because while my history of war recounts our destruction time and time again, it is my wish to leave the song of every soldier after the fighting is over, as they turn their gazes to yonder Cosdell. Two or seven, three cars, fifteen plus riders. They've been following us forever, but they're staying very. Following this entire time. Just following. Why not tell W to hang a U-turn? Maybe they'll be happy to say hi. You could get some free London name souvenirs. Souvenirs? Inside a giant ball of arts they're hand shaping. I'm treasuring the last few close shaves just fine. Thanks. The way these mercs are working doesn't add up. Especially the way they're hunting us. No, not hunting. They're driving us off. They want us away from Londinium. Aww, our high and mighty General Manfred sparing your life. Isn't that sweet of him? <laughs> You're sure you two didn't swear a blood oath? I wanna take the, his kind advice, scoot back to Kozla and teach some slum kiddos how to read. Hmm. My point is, who let you out of the military commission's dungeon? You were going walkies outside of Londinium's walls by the time I picked you up. My cell was left unguarded for a while. I thought it was a trap at first, but now I think I'm in something worse. Sure, he can be roundabout with me, hinting for me to go resolve some pain in the ass affair, but I think I'd prefer him just killing me then. That would have been easier. Not to mention, we still aren't sure what pain in the ass we're even solving. Then don't bother with it. W, can you speed up a little? It's time we said goodbye to this clinging convoy of send-offs. <laughs> Yeah, my second-hander here is not gonna stand up to much abuse. Good news, though. <laughs> we just hit a minefield. Wait half an hour earlier by yours, personally. <laughs> now, butts in seats! This looks to me like you're just... Forbing Bum River. <laughs> I left them the bigger share, I promise. Stop the car once we circle the forest ahead. From there, we'll get off and proceed on foot. A vehicle is too large of a target, and I catch up sooner or later anyway. Here's hoping you do remember where you buried every mine, W. Well, hooray for us. We're all in one piece. How's that? I did remember. Well, a couple went off, but, uh, you know. What was the term? Tectonic movement did it. They haven't caught up. I think we've successfully thrown them off. We need more information. Ideally, we rendezvous with Rhode Island ASAP. Escalon and the Doctor are on Windermere's warship right now. There's a few things I'm... Very uneasy about. What did you see? It's just intuition. The less I see any problem, the more uneasy I am. You guys met this doctor. And now the Rhode Island's doctor. I can't give you the full verdict yet. But there's no doubt that in a sense, the doctor has weakened. And I don't mean that in any negative way. But maybe it's not a weak doctor we need so much right now. 
<laughs> you sure? Who knows if some road down and will remember some random thing that happened in Chernobog, and just like that, I get a knife planted in my back. Are you really as skeptical as you'd like to tell us, W? Hard to say. There's an old hack kind of keeping me at arm's length from their beloved doctor. W. You've spent plenty of time walking this battlefield. Any ideas? <laughs> I've just been prodded this way and that like some bug. Can't even organize a sensible military op. So all I do is sit in my front row seat and spectate the most magical city siege modern society has to offer. <laughs> Chaos. Sometimes I even have to wonder at this point, is anyone actually conducting this battle? The Royal Court's legions couldn't work together to save their lives. And who gives a shit about all the small fry corpse scuttling in from the four corners to try and live their dreams of victorious vengeance? But the ultimate mastermind here is Pharesis. So this chaos has to have been planned down to the last detail. He wasn't juggling some strategical Lollapalooza. He just set the stage. And now he's waiting. As for what he's waiting for, I don't want to guess. We can't just go brain dumb and reach out to the doctor or Dr. Kaltzid, hoping they'll give us the orders. We suffered enough with Bobble. We need to seize the initiative. There's a source of info that might be more open to us than ever in our current position. <laughs> what position? The pathetic little creepy crawlies? Essentially, Sarkas. Right, and just on the off chance. Have either of you heard of any method to kill a lich? Alright then. Stuff be moving, stuff be schmooing. A lot of stuff across the world is happening, and a lot of stuff is being influenced by this... Uh, Londinium kerfuffle, right? As we can see. And holy hell, I was not expecting, at least not while we're in the Londinium arc of the story, to hear and see a goddamn Blade of the Emperor. That was something. Fart Cloud himself, or rather one of the Fart Clouds himself, decided to show up. Woof. <laughs> A lot of stuff is... A lot of nations, rather, are putting their sights on Londinium, even if they don't know they are. But anyway, we are going to be continuing on to stage 13-2 now. One quick thing before we begin with 13-2, there are no new enemies to add. Uh, however, I will say, hey, rejoice! The Sanguine Arc enemies are back, and so is Bombardment. Huzzah! Long li live the Mudrock Strat. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. But yeah, anyway. They are back, and uh, they do pretty much the same they did before, so no new enemies here. Also, because of that, I will be splicing the cutscenes for this stage into one single long cutscene, and uh, quite honestly, it will feel much better considering how it flows. But yeah, stage 13-2 is titled The Injury at Hand, and it says, We're all longing for the future. But what do we do right now? Let's begin. <sighs> it's hot. The sun is burning. I'm burning. Is that the exit? A few steps further. Just put one foot in front of the other. Maybe the fire, the anger, the pain, and the regret are all just pigments of my imagination. Or maybe the exit is. I don't know. But they're watching behind me. Those eyes. Are they judging me? Or just waiting to see how I'll carry the burden of their debts? They were great men with tremendous accomplishments. 
my commander, and the legendary Sarka's scout, and the captain, the last pure blood Vendigo. They're all dead before me, behind me. All that's left is little me, worthless me. They died so I could live. What did they expect of me? I can't think about it. I can't. I can't let their deaths be meaningless. I have to face the sun, even if it burns me. Burn me to cinders, so then in their mighty company, I shall not be ashamed. Ah. <sighs> You really do have a knack for making up right at shift change, don't you? <laughs> Is this the result of all that hard training, guard? <sighs> Percival. I stretch as much as I'm allowed to. I did not sleep particularly well. On top of that series of nightmares, the old wound in my leg aches. We almost ran straight into the Victorian battle lines in order to catch up with Nine. The fact that I'm in charge of are used to being spat on, used to not having hope, but have never been on a real battlefield. They were scared headless. I was one of the better ones, and I hate that I'm used to it. It took a lifetime's worth of good luck for us to make it to the camp in one piece. Just too hot, even at night. How long until the shift change? Fifteen minutes. You can sit a while longer. I'll go and wash my face. What's with your leg? You're limping. Have the crystal spread? No, not yet. Uh, give me my towel, Percival. It's to your left. The floral pattern? Uh, yeah. Percival raises an eyebrow. I want to say it was a gift from the owner of that County Peninsula textile factory. Red has just one like it. The old man had creases all over his face. He was lucky that his crystals grew on his belly, so all he needs to do is wear a shirt. Hopefully, he's still hiding them. Never mind. You brought back more hands than expected. Looks like the situation in the provinces is deteriorating, even before they turn into war zones. The impact is bigger than I thought. The nobles are turning a blind eye, pretty much as expected. Those towns made a living trading with the caravans. They're left hanging with the convoys to Londinium stopped on account of the war. The infected are always the first to get hit when things go south. They used to be able to plant a few crops on the edge of town, and villagers were willing to trade with them here and there. Money is money, after all, whoever it's from. It's easy to do the respectable thing when life is decent. Things are different now. It's almost time for the bean harvest. These infected spend the last season watering the fields, caring for their crops. But they've chosen to run off and join us now, abandoning the harvest that would have been waiting for them in a few months, and those to come in the future. They would rather leave. They must be desperate. We infected may be used to this kind of deprivation. But we can't come to the same conclusion every time. Are you still resting, sir? I hear voices. You're awake. You again. I said. Are you taking the night off? A night shift now? Supper? I have canned food from Victoria. Not the best in terms of taste, but convenient. Uh, cigarettes, wine, a bit of uh, a pick-me-up in the middle of the night. Pretty clean, all things considered. Uh, razors, arts units, uh, you name it. What about you, Fer Percival? Would you like some uh, hair cream? Not easy to find this stuff these days. It's usually only the officers who carry it, after all. Officers don't die so often. No, just harder to dig them out from the heap. They're usually at the bottom, you know. 
You need medicine again? Well, I haven't been feeling my best. A lot of pain, the occasional hallucination. I'm scared that the rocks could start growing into my brain. It's not going to get any better if you keep digging in those dusty craters. The best we can do is basic medicine that slows the progression of the condition. Don't expect it to save your life. I know, I know, I, uh... I know you're reselling our medicine. This bunch of infected told me that they bought a rip of meds from a sarcas on a motorbike and that they worked okay. Uh, well, but... Made some decent money, didn't you? How about we decide your punishment based on how many coins you have in your pocket? Uh, um, I was just making sure that stuff got where it's needed. There is a war going on after all. You won't get another warning. But at least the meds made it to them when we don't have enough messengers to deliver to everyone. It won't happen again, I promise. Just a little bit, a few pills. I've been running up fever for days. Guard. <laughs> Put in a form for him. Make sure he's registered this time. Uh, 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 thank you. Don't thank us. Thank the doctors. They went from elite to pariah when they contracted a ripper fee in their labs and their companies didn't want to pay the, the insurance. It's not an easy change to accept. Fortunately, they heard of the reunion and came looking for us. What about your old stomping rounds? I'm more than just grateful to them, but they'll never forgive me. I chose this path on my own. We just don't have the same grade of equipment that Rhode Island does. Well, we're not really developing medicine either. Right, we don't take medicine to get well, just to live a little longer. There is no medicine that will cure a ripathy. I still remember the operators hurrying around medical and the sight of Dr. Consett in her lab when I was at Rhode Island. If there is hope for a ripathy cure, then it's at Rhode Island. I still feel a sense of pride for having been part of it, even though I have no right to, because I chose betrayal. But when will the day come when a cure for ripathy is found? Fifty years? A hundred years? A thousand years? And what do the infected do before then? Ripathy is no longer just a condition. It is a symbol of hatred, victimization, blame and alienation. Everyone here has a story, and they are all alike. What good is medicine in the face of all that? It is like rowing against the tide. This land is not a glorious one of morality and kindness. That's why we can't turn away from violence. Shameful as it is, it's powerful. But maybe... No, that's something for the distant future. What's your name? Me? Oh, um... Uh, medicine peddler? Man on bike? I'm not the kind of guy anyone needs to remember. That's not a name. Okay, let me think of a cool one. What's going on? Shouting. And the sound of weapons clanging. Go hide in the back, Sarkas. Percival, go and reassure the civilians that just joined us. They're scared enough as is. I put a hand on the sword on my belt. It is always at the ready. <sighs> you really want me to kill you? You men are in no shape to fight. Our warriors surround a group of bruised and dirty Victorian soldiers. Their sergeant is panting, with fresh wounds on his body. Was this really an attack? What's going on, Nine? They sneaked into the village from the north. Romanich took a bolt. The doctor is taking care of him now. They're out of their minds trying to attack our camp with just 21 men, including a handful of on stretchers. Huh! Look at what we have in the heartland of our country! 
A stone's throw from our great capital! A swarm of damn reunion infected! Come, kill me if you dare, or I'll kill you all! Conspirators, agitators, rioters, murderers, a blight! You're a blight! No wonder the war is going badly. Those barbaric devils could never beat us. The real enemy is among us, behind our backs! Wherever there's disorder, you infected her, never, are never far away! Looks like you just came back from the front lines. Low morale, poor organization, hastily wrapped wounds, obsolete equipment. You don't look like professional soldiers. Conscripts? We're from the Duke of Fives 4th Battalion. What's the name of the company again? Uh, Blackstream Squad and East Ham Squad. Uh, do you have a doctor here? Shut up, soldier, and ready your weapon! But, Sergeant, uh, Victor... This is an order! Ready your weapon! Keep your voice down, Victorian. There are civilians sleeping in the camp. Victorian civilians. Civilians? Victoria would have given them a life they deserve if they didn't join you to become criminals and malcontents. Why are all the scum in this land infected? Why is every gangster, bandit, devil and reunion trader infected? Why is the Honorable Duke of Fife not infected? Why was His Majesty Frederick III not infected? Why are honest and upright folk not infected? Do people become despicable because they're infected? Or do they become infected because they're despicable? What about you? Is despicability infectious too? How dare you! Enough! The Victorian sergeant's eyes widen as he turns to one side, trying to hide his arm from my sight. His lips tremble, but no words come out. We're all despicable scum now! Aren't we, sir? I... I'm different! This is an honorable... Your arm. I can see the crystals protruding from it. Your condition is... Progressing rapidly. I'm fighting and killing Sarkas for my country. I just got a bit of dirt on it. Maybe devil blood. <laughs> what did you learn in boot camp? Didn't they teach you anything about active originium zones? The instructors just told us to aim and pull the trigger. That's what we spent our two weeks on. I take it you weren't issued any inhibitors either. Uh, inhibitors? Nine, I think they're all infected. Uh, it can't be! I just got a physical one week ago and I was in perfect health! One week could be a rapid onset, or they lied to you to keep you on the front lines. Shut up! How long have the ones on the stretchers been unconscious? They're in critical condition. B what? Death and disintegration from acute condition is dangerous to both you and us. You are right to have the unconscious lying face up on the stretchers to prevent suffocation. But did you check their backs? <laughs> Suddenly silent, the sergeant walks towards the stretcher, as though trying to turn the man lying on it over, but withdraws his hand as soon as it touches the soldier. The sergeant looks helpless like he's facing a deadly tusk beast that could spit lightning and poison, one that could leap at him at any moment. But the man is, in hor in, is his comrade. Before they were comrades, they might have been cousins, tilling the same piece of land together. I sigh and sit the unconscious Victorian soldier up. There is no need to remove his jacket. Reginium crystals have pierced the clothing on his back. Heavens! Victor! Damn it! I shouldn't have taken him along. His dad would kill him and kill me if he learned that his son was infected. No, Sarkas used Witchcraft to infect us! I knew it! It's the devil's curse! It's not enough that they defiled our land, now they want to defile our souls too! That's enough. Sarkas are naturally susceptible to infection, 
and their soldiers are overwhelming, overwhelmingly infected. When you kill them, or when you get infected and they kill you, if there is no one to clean up the bodies... I said no more. I heard a sound. It's a familiar sound. Whether in Rimbilliton, Rhode Island, or here and now. The sound that every infected fears most. The sound of us shattering. I've heard sounds in the trenches. You told me it was artillery, Sergeant! It was artillery! Our enemy will use anything and everything to destroy us and our country, including their own deaths! Devil's bad, it's Torrance. There was none of this crap during His Majesty Frederick III's reign! We... we must expel this scum from Victoria, we... We... What can we do? Can we save Victor? We... we dwell in the blessing of glorious Victoria... <laughs> what an idiot. I'll say this again. You're an infected. Very infected. In case this isn't clear to you, like us, like everyone else here... You're going to die. The first time I saw an infected shatter was in the middle of a lake. I was seven, young and innocent. It was my dream to become captain of the miners' patrol. I'd get to stay up late at night, wear a cool uniform, and walk around with a bright torch. Most families in Rimbilliton made their living in mining, digging, and processing ore. We did everything to prevent infection. But accidents happen. One day, the adults came home early. Mother and the other women of the house whispered in a corner. The man smoked in silence until the entire room was filled with that acrid scent. In between coughs, I ran around the living room, pretending to be a surveyor looking for new veins in a fog-filled valley. Dad grabbed me by the collar and put me to bed. I woke up earlier than usual the next day. I think I was trying to grab a can of soda while nobody was watching. Grandma was sitting in the living room next to her luggage. She said she was going on a journey. I pestered her to let me go with her. She could never say no to me. She said I could come a short way with her. Then I had to go back home. We saw a salt lake in the distance. It was a shallow one that only appeared in the rainy season, but it rained a lot that year. We couldn't see the other side of the lake. Grandma told me that was as far as I could go. I said all right. She made me promise, like when she made me promise I would be a good boy when I first went to school. But I wasn't a good boy anymore. I quietly followed her, hiding behind a bush when she got to the lakeside. Grandma got onto a boat with a few people on it. They all had strange stones growing out of their bodies, and one of them was wrapped up in a blanket. The boatman turned on the engine. I watched from the shore as the boat disappeared into the fog. I was confused. Grandma didn't say anything to me on her way. It was like an ordinary picnic trip. I was about to turn around, thinking about where... I would have breakfast before going home. Then I heard a sound like crystal shattering. I turned around and saw originium dust sprayed into the air, mixing with the fog, reflecting an eerie glow in the sun. It was like a dream. Was that how you got infected? No, I was lucky. That time. Maybe it really was a dream, brought about by a summer morning. But I never saw grandma again. 
and my family never talked about her anymore. She... She was always thoughtful and cautious. It wasn't like her to let her child follow her, putting her, him in danger. For once though, she made a selfish choice on her journey. She wanted to spend just a little more time with her grandson. Maybe she even wanted to give me a hug. Now I remember, I didn't even get to show her my report card at semester. It was the best I ever did in school. The sounds of the forest stopped. The flickering light shining through the shadows of the trees no longer moved. Then came the sound of lament and painful moaning. On your guard, Red. The Victorians have stopped. Looks like they're planning to make camp. Here? It's only a few hundred meters from our camp. They no longer have the strength to cover their tracks. Who knows if there's a scouting party shadowing them somewhere. Red's hands never stop, even as he complains, cutting away the bothersome vines. We approach their position and see their flickering shadows through these sparse bushes. Soldiers lie on the ground in exhaustion, hopelessly burying their heads amongst the falling leaves. The sergeant sits down on a rock, silently polishing his sword, the only weapon he has left. I guess they just didn't have the strength to go any further. These people don't have the luxury to think. They're still living in a dream. It'll all pass. Were they really just separated from the rest of the army? These Victorians are lucky. They faced a gentle exile, not the swords of their comrades. It's not easy to accept that you're infected. We should wait for them to understand who they are, and for them to make a choice. Do you really mean to take them in, these soldiers? We're weak, so are they. What's the plan then? Finish the shift and notify the sentries. Expand the patrols to include this camp. The infected stand together. Stand together. Pretty words. Of course we stand together. What other choice did we have? But are the words stand together so simple that we fail to appreciate their true meaning? Aripathy changed all our lives equally, robbed us of our futures equally. But is what, it's, what is taken from a farmer who has to pay his taxes out of seed stored for next year's planting equal to what is taken from a wealthy merchant with a safe full of pure gold? When what we had to begin with was not equal, neither are the choices that survive deprivation. Who are we really standing together with, then? You're Talula, right? Founder of the Reunion, leader of the Infected. They say you did great things in Orsus. All the Infected of Victoria are talking about you. Is it true that you captured a city? A city for the Infected? Is it still there? I'm no leader. I'm just a member of the reunion movement. Have some porridge. We're setting out soon. Tell us more about your city, Talula. <laughs> it's... <laughs> oh, no need to hang your head. I suppose th things didn't go so smoothly if you're in Victoria now. now. Of course the uninfected wouldn't let us win that easily after trampling on us for so long. What does it matter if those scum tripped you up once? You're a union! We all believe in you! Talula looks down at the pot she is stirring, stirring bowl after bowl of hot porridge. The steam from the pot obscures her vision. Careful, it's hot. They all believe in you. What do you think about it, huh? Being the hope of so many? 
You're a veteran for Mursus, aren't you? What are you talking about? Malia. I know, sorry, couldn't resist. <laughs> Is it true that there was a bit of trouble at camp yesterday? It's fine, all taken care of. Stop crowding Tallulah like that and start packing. We have a long way to go today. Oh yeah, I still have fertilizer to load onto the truck. And it's not you reunion anymore. Oh yeah, we reunion too. <laughs> See you later. Guard. It's fine. No need to say anything. I take the bowl of porridge from Talula. She's very pale. There are things we can't tell them yet. I know. It's your decision. Reunion can collapse again. I'm the banner that you rallied to in Victoria. I accept that. But I'm deceiving them. I'm still... It's no more or less than you deserve. It's none of my business whether you see this as an honor or punishment for your crimes. What the others need is hope. Are you going to tell them that you were under the influence of an evil god, and everything that happened at Chernobog was an Ursine plot? I would rather our organization be built on a lie. You were built on a lie back then too. I know. Payback will come, someday, but at least this time, we lied for the infected. There are no second chances for a union. I hope we don't go down the same path you did. What did that sister of yours say in Chernobog? Until the day when the infected are judged fairly. <laughs> I'll wait. I'll be your tool. Until the day comes. Um, excuse me. What are you doing here, Victorian? I'm not armed. Armed. Uh, your sentry searched me. I caught up with. <sighs> My brothers haven't eaten in four days. Some of them I don't know. They don't look good. I have a lighter here and a... Do you want brass buttons? If you could be so kind as to trade some bread for these, um... I know it's not enough. I have a bunch of good leather back at home in, uh, Blackstream. Well, once I get back, I'll sell it and pay you back double. The young man gazes hungrily at the pot, his hand grabbing his own uniform tightly, perhaps out of nervousness or trying to straighten it out to look more presentable. Lula puts a bowl of porridge before him. You can take what's left in the pot. Uh, thank you. Uh, here's the lighter. Uh, sometimes you need to click it a few times before it lights. Uh, and the button. I take the lighter and grab the hand trying to rip the buttons off. It's fine. Eat. He practically pours the food down his throat. Where's your sergeant? I... <clears throat> don't know. We haven't seen him all morning. I was worried he would barge into your camp again. Uh, say, did you hear any sounds in the night? Like artillery fire? No reports of anything like that. He... <laughs> Never mind. Everyone's gone mad. Us, them. There's no sane man left on the front. Sounds like things are rough out there. Rough, huh? You have no idea what the Sarkas are using against us. They have no battleships, nor armored vehicles. We thought the devils were just barbarians fighting our armies with swords and bows. How <laughs> wrong we were. Could you imagine an entire squad of Sarkas casters casting their arts at the same time? It was more terrifying than any artillery or ballist of fire. Get hit by a shell and you might lose an arm or leg. The fragments digging themselves into your flesh causing terrible pain. But the Sarkas? They turned the battlefield to the hell of Lateran tales. I saw armored vehicles pierced by lightning bolts of blood. My mates melted into puddles of gore. 
I never imagined it would turn out like this when the Duke of Fife's men dragged me out of these sissy beasts' pants. <sighs> Forget it. I'd rather not think about anything. Thanks for the porridge. I'll bring the pot back later. You can keep it. We have plenty of them. And it might be of use to you. Thank you so much. I'll never forget it. Uh, are you leaving? V where are you going? Uh, this is pretty much a battlefield now, and it's Victoria's lands all around, so... Uh, for in for the infected... <laughs> oh, I'm um, sorry, I shouldn't have asked. Forget I said anything. The soldier hurries to leave, grabbing the side of the pot with his one good hand, and supporting the bottom with the limp arm. Grimacing at the heat. I reach into my pocket and dig out what I just got from the doctor. Hey, wait. I go up to him and put the vial of medicine in his pocket. Um, what's this? It'll relieve some of the worst symptoms. You can share it with the others. I'll visit Blackstream and collect what you owe me. I... Sir... Go. <laughs> Your love, our village. Thanks. You re really are like the Rhode Islanders. I heard you were the one who found the doctors who knew how to make the medicine. To be honest, what we're making hardly even qualifies as medicine compared to the suppressants that I knew. Rhode Island offers low-cost treatment plans. But at the end of the day, they are a company. They need research funding, and they have corporate due diligence to deal with. Who knows how many eyes are on them in Casimir's and Colombia? That's why you persuaded Nine to go north. The warriors say there is a factory there. A tiny pharmaceutical factory. So small, it's barely even a workshop. It's not even a nomadic plate. But that one little piece of land was... Once the salvation of many infected. That is, until it grew big enough that it caught people's attention. Some of the ones driven out of there joined us, and that's how we heard the story. It's deep in the forest where nobody's watching. We need medicine, even if it's just a pale imitation of the real thing. But more importantly, it was once a starting point of Victoria's reunion movement. We have to unite those scattered across Victoria. We have to tell them that help has come. I've seen plenty of infected self-help organizations. Kind souls helped us from time to time, but in the end, none of them lasted. When I was at Rhode Island, I often wondered if things would get better if everyone worked harder and made more medicine. Maybe, but Chernobog changed my mind. Why do they crack down on workshops like these? Why are kindness and hard work warped by hatred and prejudice? When evil itself is fuzzy as the fog, why does everyone, even the infected themselves, decide to wait for their own deaths in the middle of a lake? I stare at Alula, who hardly reacts to my words. Her eyes are calm, unusually so. Her soul is too very, having seen too much. What has become of the woman who was once our leader? Or had she uttered the same words before, and seen what came of them? <sighs> you know what I mean. Oripathy is an illness, but we'll leave the illness to Rhode Island for now. Our enemy isn't just oripathy, it's oppression and prejudice the truths they've tried to cover up with the Ripathy. Ripathy is just the culmination of all the decay across the lands. Taking back a symbol may help the infected of Victoria realize that and stand together with us. Stand together. That's something only Reunion can do. Have you told the others how you think? Hmm? Of course. I'm always talking to Nine about our... No, you know the one I'm talking about. 
Oh. <sighs> a little. I got a gentle answer. That's why I'm here. Whether the case, whatever the case, we didn't choose the same path, so I, um... It's not my place to ask for more. Of course it isn't. Rhode Island is a paradise of idealists. Me? A man who could only see what stands right in front of me. The gain and loss right in front of me. I heard the veteran guerrilla fighters talk about the old days of the reunion in the tundra, the ideals that everyone held. A city of the infected, our home. Some of them thought it was just within reach. It was almost realized at Chernobog, but fell short in the end. But I know the city of our dreams is still far, far away. And how could a single city be enough? What could a single city do? You're still limping. Maybe you should go sit in the back. Just a little sprain. You haven't been on a lot of expeditions lately. My squad passed through the wilderness the other day with infected comrades from Grievich. The earth had been torn open with ditches everywhere, looked like one of the turnip farms back home, except much smaller. I tripped. <laughs> what was it? I didn't think there were a place like that near Londinium. Walt said that all those trenches, hundreds of them, each one big enough to fit our entire squad, were battleship treadmarks. Hmm. No wonder you've looked worried. It takes all my strength just to go from day to day. Don't think too much about it. A report from the scouts, guard. We heard sounds from the woods on the left side up ahead. The Originium Zone sensor went off when we got close, so we couldn't be sure exactly what it was. Send word to the rest of the team. We'll go around. Roger! Percival. I'll come along with a few guys. Don't want you to trip again. There's an unsettling smell in the air. The instruments show a high level of active originium. Not a good sign. Remember your protective measures. Keep your masks on. Was that a man under the tree? No, it's a Victorian uniform. Ripped almost beyond recognition, but somehow familiar. A sergeant's badge lies on the ground next to it. A tiny music box sits a short distance away, covered in originium dust, but still barely playing. Hmm. Infected confirmed dead. We should leave. Percival walks slowly, humming along with the scattered music. Do you know the song guard? No, but I've heard it before. The sun on the meadow is summery warm, filling our home with euphoria. We gather together to greet the storm. Tomorrow belongs to Victoria. The Victorian National Anthem. Our teacher made us sing it over and over until we had it memorized, when I was little, before I got sick. It's been a long time since I last heard it. I was born in Victoria. By all accounts, I should be Victorian, but what about now? That sergeant believed he belonged to Victoria to the very end. He was lucky. He didn't get to go through everything he would have gone through. The reason I called myself Reunion... I was tired of being punched, being thrown out of factories before I got paid. Being kept out of even the cheapest hostel rooms, no matter how much money I had on me. The Reunion movement showed me another path besides suffering and dying in the silence. That was all I needed. Even if the price was abandoning my family, my country, and everything else I had. In 
fact, I had all lost all of it the moment the first crystal popped through my skin, but it took me a long time to get it. All of us, Ursin, Colombian, Victorian, Sarkas, Feline, the Berry, we are all reunion. <laughs> if we have to cross every battlefront, every war zone, every corpse-laden ruin, in order for our deaths to be seen and heard, then we'll cross them. And that will be 13-2. Guard face reveal! Well, I was questioning who the person was that I saw in uh, in the animated trailer, because I didn't recognize them, and I didn't really connect it to guard, but... Uh, guard face reveal. I am both happy about that, that he became such a prominent character, and is, as we see, slowly, slowly becoming a very prominent figure in this new reunion movement. I do wonder where this will lead to in the future. But uh, I do not know if I should be happy about him having a face now, becoming a more prominent character and having quite quite the backstory explained here. Um, let's, let's hope, right? Anyway, we are going to be continuing on to stage 13-3 now. Titled, Not a Moment's Rest. Until the dust settles, no one can catch their breath. Let's begin. Endless reports. An avalanche of intel has flooded this lonely battleship ever since it left Norpor. There are signs of trouble from Lithanian to the east, Sargon to the southwest, Kirak to the west, while everything remains silent in the south. The messengers are suffocating, eating away at my nerves. My mother seems utterly unmoved, impassively issuing order after order. But even she cannot resist a frown when she reads the congratulations from her fellow dukes. This is her life. She is here and so this is my Lincarden. I am home. <sighs> Focus, Delphine. Listen to the report. This is no time to let your mind wander. She adjusts the position of her eye patch. Is it to hide the wrinkles? The weather here is very different from Lincarden. It's oppressed, heavy, the gloom of rain and fog ever present. I just want to... What are you gazing at so absent-mindedly, Delphine? Nothing, mother. It's just... I don't get to see Londinium from this angle very often. I know how you look when your mind is wandering. Are you bored by the chatters from the rear? No, I'm just thinking about Norpor Borough. Sorry, I didn't expect the situation in Londinium to deteriorate so much, so quickly. I should have arranged for the evacuation sooner. We had compiled reports on everything that went on in Londinium, but we weren't able to bring them. We should be the ones apologizing. That's alright. A few little troubles don't mean much to the big picture. Perhaps the Duke of Caster should be held responsible for most of them. I know. Let's hope my messenger isn't making things too difficult for her right now. But the value of that intel to subsequent operations... Pales in comparison to your value, Delphine. Relax. I'm here, and Arnclad Glaive is nearby. Everything will be right again once we return to the city. We'll restore Londinium and Victoria. Of course. Mother, I... I thought I would die down there. I wouldn't let it happen to my daughter. You've done well. You have the patience and attention to detail of your father. 
but you don't have to be the one to do all that work. You're my heir, and your place is at Lincarden. Our standoff with Athanian can be trying. You'll need to get used to those matters. Plus, I could use someone to talk to. I thought I could do better. Sorry. There are many things that a Duke of Windermere must worry about, for which she needs nerves of steel. But that's not your burden. Not yet. You can rely on your mother, at least until she's too old to walk. I understand. Uh, thank you, mother. We'll be home in another four or five hours. I've arranged for all the stuff you left behind at the old house to be set up. Your pajamas, your pillow, your bed, your bathtub. That's all stuff from before I came to Leninium. It's not like you're any taller. I have some nice things for you as well, but I'll keep those a secret for now. Get a good night's sleep once we're back. But don't get complacent. We have a lot to do. <laughs> what is it? I was in Londinium a long time, wasn't I? I had many friends, outstanding friends, from whom I had a lot to learn. We lived in a city in disorder, chewing up and swallowing the lives we once had. But we believed in our cause. I was proud of it. Then things changed. One agent after another disappeared, and the Sarkas took the city. I was on my own. I had to live with more common people. For the first time I learned how they lived, and how they viewed Victoria. Most of them are dead now. Those who still live huddle in the bowels of this ship, waiting for you to decide their fate. One hundred meters beneath my pajamas, bed and bathtub. Hmm. I'm really grateful, really, but is it all because... She does not let me finish. She puts her hand on my head without patting it, but I know this is her way of showing affection. You did well, my daughter. You exceeded my expectations. Go and see the troops below. It'll do you good to talk with them. With that, her grace departs. She's always swift and decisive. I have no chance to say any more. I scratch my slightly untidied head. Mother! We can talk later. You shouldn't have come here yourself. The words that come out of my own mouth surprise me. Was it not because of my call for help that she came? How could I say that? It's too... risky. We can't fully trust the Lithanians, and we don't know what the Sarkas are planning next. We've fallen behind on intel... She dismisses me with a wave, perhaps telling me not to think too much about it. Her silhouette remains sharp, making me feel like I'm worrying too much, and that she can take hand that she can handle it all. <sighs> She's right. I'm not much taller at all. How long will our food last? I don't think this warship was prepared to take on so many refugees. We can't just leave them to fend for themselves. Mrs. Samuel grabbed my hand just now. She didn't say nothing. All she did was look at me. I, I can't take it anymore. Let's find Delphine. Calm down, Hannah. We're on someone else's ship. I just... I'll go keep in company. The old timers will feel better with a familiar face around. I'll stay with you. Sorry to keep you waiting. I talked to the quartermaster. Some food will make it to those who need it most. That's the best I can do. Thank you, Delphine, and thanks to Duke Windermere. Part of me hopes that Mother really wants to help these poor people out of the kindness of her heart, but... I know. It's because of me, or should I say, because of who I am. It's fine, as long as it helps the people who fled with us. 
You've adapted quickly, Vina. The time when we could do as we pleased has passed, Alphine. Many souls on the ship are counting on me. I have a responsibility to them, both as Vina and as the Siege. Lots of people are looking at us. I can tell Vina is busy. Mothership is one of the biggest of the Victorian ships of the line, but it was never designed to evacuate civilians. Certainly not this many. The people of Norpor are squeezed into holds meant to store ammunition and weapons, trying their best to find a clean place to sit down. This is not the best accommodation, even if the most dangerous weapons have been removed. Vina's gang are doing their best to maintain order. The refugees whisper about her amongst themselves. The officers on the ship pay no heed, nor does Vina respond to their calls of Your Majesty or Your Royal Highness. Regardless, she has become the heart and soul of this place. Perhaps the civilians don't even realize themselves, but the reason they trust Vina is not so much because of her status, but because she is the only one they can rely on in this unfamiliar environment. How goes the war? The number of reports coming in is unreal. Too many variables to keep track of. The Duke of Wellington's offensive is unsteady and our own defensive lines are being pressed. We should have an overwhelming advantage in the terms of force, even if the Dukes have yet to commit their full strength. We are facing a foe beyond the scope of modern military theory. The Nachtzer King, the only thing we know about him comes from sparse records of ancient times. It has been too long since Victoria. Indeed, Terra as a whole last faced a real Sarka's army. What chain reaction will their witchcraft produce? Are they really as primitive and backwards as the records say? What force have the various Sarkas branches come together to form, where we can't see them? Why do they stand together? <laughs> no need to worry too much though. Mother, um, the Duke Windermere and Duke Wellington will conduct this war together. The Duke of Castor has also publicly declared her allegiance. The stalemate will not last long. Once we return to Ironclad Galave, both supplies and support will... Whoa! What was that? Looks like we're passing through a canyon. A good thing. It means we're about to leave the battlefield. A canyon. I feel even less at ease. I know where Mother's confidence comes from. This ship is defended by Windermere's pride, her sword guards. If the Sarkas think this merely a reckless act by the Duke of Windermere, they will find themselves on the receiving end of blades that have been honed since the War of the Four Emperors. But do we truly know the Sarkas? Is the ship slowing down, Siege? I think so. And the weather outside. Say, what time is it? How long has it been since we left Norpor? A few hours, I think. Is this just an ordinary canyon? Yes, nothing remarkable besides some abandoned factories. Abandoned factories. Yes, this place has been abandoned since before Londinium fell into chaos. Why? Because of catastrophe. The massive crystal formations that Catastrophe ha left behind. Be careful! <clears throat> hey, I'm talking to you! <clears throat> Something's not right. There's a different smell in the air. I look around instinctively. All the elite soldiers in the hold are gone. This is not right. Get away from me, Mana! Siege pulls her back before I can. I see the soldiers smiling at me. Look out! It's too late. Blood seeps from the gaps in the ceiling, dripping into the infiltrator's eyes. Drip. Merge. Spread. Blood? Where did this blood come from? Look out!
Siege pushes me away. An instant later, a blood mist bursts where I stood. Soon the entire hall is engulfed in crimson. Blood mist? Sarka's witchcraft! Too many civilians here. Morgan, Dagda, Indra. The four of them exchange gazes and take up positions around the frightened crowd. The emotions of the crowd range from shock to panic. Some in the corners begin to scream without even seeing exactly what happened. Go down! The stairs are to the north! Lady Delphine! Are you the ship's doctor? We are under attack by witchcraft. The ship's castlers can't decipher it yet. The duke can't... Damn! How did they... Look out! A claw slaps away the sword that was inches from his throat. The blood mist disperses, then reconverges, taking a gooey, wet form. A sarcas emerges from the bloody shadow. The Confessarius Guard in Sarkas. The Vampire's Witchcraft has taken hold. I know that outfit. The Skull Mask. The size of kings. One variable to eliminate. Cause chaos and eliminate the old blood. Hesitate not to spill your own blood. Oh? You were part of the siege of the Knights of the Tower! Careful! I've got ya! You will die here with your king, Victorian. Do it! Mother is on deck, but we still have civilians and our people below. I... I... Delphine, you're left! <sighs> Careful! Sorry, thanks. There are many of them, we can pin them down. The reinforced compartment is one bulkhead away. Get the civilians there! No, there's something more important than you must do. Those people came with me. I promise to protect them. Duke Windermere likely doesn't know how bad things are below. Go and inform her. I'll hold out until your reinforcements arrive. But I... This suits us better. You have a formal command structure. There is no way to integrate us quickly. Vina! Go! Damn, you've got a hard head. Almost made my hand go numb. The Confessarius only utters a Sarkar's profanity. So be it. The signs of kings will be spoils enough. Surround the Aslan. Get ready for a brawl, mates. For an instant, I wish I was with them. Like when I first joined Slobberknocker Gym, when I went from being alone to being in a community. Cater and... Baird. We stood together. This ends now. The swing of the hammer compresses the air in the passage. It roars. <laughs> Tiny drops of liquid fall on my face. My vision blurs. Delphine! A shadow draws near. Delphine! Mother? I try to wipe my eyes. I see another pair of eyes right there, in front of me. Red flows from their sockets. Delphine, go no further. You're hurt. You'll only be in the way. Same for me. <sighs> Kill me before whatever this is consumes me. The sword guards and her grace will kill the Sarkas. Do not put yourself in danger, Delphine. No, I don't even feel the pain anymore. Free me, then stop. I draw my sword. She is still conscious. I should not do this to her, but I see 
the relief in her eyes. She grabs my sword, sending it into her own body. I'm trembling. I can't see clearly. Lady Delphine, you must live. Thank you for freeing me. I look down and see the red eyes. She gives up breathing, smiling to the end. This is Sarkas. Mother! My feet cannot move. Very unease and fear grip them. The lights go out. The only light comes from above deck. There is only silence amongst the bodies. Rain solidifies as it falls. Flowing backwards, evaporating, converging. A red-black sun rises into the sky, obscuring its white counterpart. A bloodless complexion emerges from the black sun, not a speck of blood on it. He descends from the black sun. I avert my gaze. Am I afraid? How oh, shameful. Hmm. You should not have dodged. The paleness of your face would have contrasted well with the blood drops. They would have painted a picture of beautiful despair. Hmm. <laughs> Leeches can't stop playing with blood, I see. Nothing has changed with you people, even after all these centuries. Rain begins to fall again. Drip, drop. Look. It's a good day to die. Your Grace, this attack was planned. As expected. For a sovereign of the Sarkas to pay a personal visit, though. All well and good, I suppose. The battle below is not going well. The officers are organizing the defense. No matter. This one is our only threat. Mother, the Duke of Indermair points her sword towards the invading Sarka's leader. I cannot see the expression on her face, but I know that is not the mother I know so well. The soldier was right. I would only be in the way. I've long had enough of Lithanian spire arts. I wonder what the spine of a vampire looks like. Hmm. You're a strong Victorian. You don't think you'll shirk back. But your blood will betray you. The creator built a bridge of life for humanity. And I stand above the bridge. Oh? Not any worse than those spire madmen. A blue blade cuts through the rain of blood. A tiny drop of rain cuts open mother's cheek. Was it the red rain or blood seeping out? I could not see. There is no ch change in Mother's expression, but have I ever seen her get hurt before? Poor fool. Still clinging to dreams and fantasies. Guess why your battleship fell from within? <laughs> Focus on the mission at hand, soldiers. Ready. Roger! Your duty is to kill the enemies of Windermere, not protect the life of Windermere. Do all you can to weaken the Sarkas. Victoria will take back what is hers. The vampire's movement starts to slow. No, the sword guards are too fast. I've received former military training. I did not go to Londinium unprepared. But here and now I realize the weight of the words Duke of Windermere. My mother never let her daughter see the kinds of battlefields that she knew. Hmm. Not bad. Not bad. 
You aren't the Duke of Victoria for nothing. How many sarkas have you eaten? I don't have any such disgusting habits. No. You and your ancestors reveled in war, from Casimir to Lithanian. A Duke of Windermere once had an army of Sarkas in the War of the Four Nations, which engulfed most of the land. How did you or your ancestry use them? <laughs> Parlor tricks, the theft of witchcraft, a favorite of the Nachtzer. The blood and flesh of Sarka spread across the battlefield, becoming yet another bulwark for your glorious armada. You ate them up, all right. Are you after revenge, Sarkas? Of course. How dare you trifle with the methods of my creation, the property of the Crimson Court? Is being strengthened by the blood of the fallen? No. It is no longer bodily fluids, but a part of the curse. Prepare counter arts! Stay calm. Take a deep breath. My throat is coarse. I cannot speak. I try to gasp for air. But the smell of blood is all there is. Vampire and Confessarius. This is Mother's flagship, Lincoln Dream's most experienced commanders, bravest sailors, and most steadfast warriors are gathered here. Mother once told me that war is not about heroes, about ch charging into danger. A commander must see the whole battlefield in order to see the way to victory. But I realize why the ship sailed deep behind enemy lines without support. Because of me. I... No. This is no time for self-flagellation. I have to do something. If there is no place on Mother's Battlefield for me, someone must bring order. One of the kings of the Sarkas court is here. But would they really attack us so recklessly? My espionage background tells me that something is missing from this puzzle. I have to do something. Think! <gasps> Could it be? No. Arts that can teleport an entire army are unheard of. Our ship fell from within. I know this feeling. The Matsi. I encountered him personally when leaving Northport. I had heard about his terrible king of the Sarkas court from Amia, but he was defeated. How could he... Still, this is the most likely answer. There are two kings of the Sarkas court on this ship. A truly terrifying conclusion. But what about the vampire? Why didn't he go straight to his target, if he could use his witchcraft on the officers? Attacking secondary targets with witchcraft and creating the disorder with assassins, that's too inefficient. But the Sarkas fighting with mother... The Damatsi, did he simply infiltrate us by taking the face of a Victorian? If... Damn it! Mother! Delphine, stay back! That one's fake! The sword guard's weapons impale the vampire. The light of arts penetrates the Sarkas' twisted visage. The arts of the sword guards of Windermere, passed on from generation to generation, are simple but brutally effective. Mother quickly sets her sights back on the target. I draw my sword. The sword guards do not hear my cry, but Mother is ready. The vampire laughs. The massive blood arts explode before it can be cast. A gust of wind sweeps through the sticky air, blowing away the sanguine rain and wind. Death falls silent. True terror begins to spread slowly but surely. Blood converges upon the hand of the silhouette forming a crystal, then the other, the true. Enough. 
I don't enjoy seeing another wear my face. The sword guards pull back instantly. Even so, two of them are late by an eyelash, and their flesh takes incomprehensible form in a split second. I can feel my sword hand trembling, my throat seizing up. This is a battle beyond my comprehension. A little girl saw through your disguise. You're losing your touch, Damatsi. The previous you would have been more convincing. Hmm. Is that so? These arts are merely a poor imitation by the Confessarius. Foul, uncouth, vulgar killing. He looks towards me, then towards Mother. I'm trembling. Delphine! I yes! Good job seeing through the trick. All the sword guards would have been lost. But there's nothing more you can do here now. I... I... Uh... The escort fleet is approaching. We must ensure the communication with the fleet is maintained. The communication tower... It's behind the deck! The enemy is few in number. Go! I'm counting on you. She pats my shoulder with an injured hand. Only then do I notice that she has many more scars on her than I remembered. Understood. I turn around and run f for the communications tower. Pride overcame fear in that instant. Mother said, I'm counting on you. I see the confessari trying to blow the communications tower and our soldiers still resisting. Thank goodness the communication tower hasn't fallen yet. The ship's slowing down? It's the engines! They're attacking the engine room! <laughs> D damn it! <laughs> Grab my hand! Don't look back! Get up! <sighs> Thank you. Uh, oh, Lady Delphine! We must regroup a counterattack. Reinforcements are on the way. Listen up, men! Dust clouds in the distance. Help is on the way! Their plan... Has failed? So easily? I turn around. The front of the deck has been completely engulfed in red fog, with only the flashing of sword and vampiric arts to penetrate it. Why do I feel so uneasy? I... Delphine, look out! A pair of eyes peer at me, in infinite raindrops, in the reflection of blood on the deck. The vampire's hand brushes my neck, why? Is he not fighting mother? Mina tries to push me away, but it's too late. My sword. I still have my sword. I am her daughter. She's counting on me. The blood woman crimson witchcraft vanishes into thin air. Are you alright? I'm fine. It's all in my head. Your troops are holding the back, back the enemy down below, so we've come up to help. The bad news is that we found traces of the Damazi down there. We know. The Sanguine Arc and Damazi are attacking together. No, wait. That attack was not a Damazi feint. It was true blue vampiric witchcraft. If the king of the Sarkas court had intended to kill me, there is no reason I should still be alive. It was not my own strength that allowed me to resist. He had other plans. There is no doubt about that. Once again I look toward the sword guards. Their swords are still flashing. I can faintly see their silhouettes converging. Something's not right. They are falling one by one. They are backing up. This is not right. Where is mother? Delphine, where are you going? <sighs> Dreadful. 
the scent of blood has changed. The Confessarius has succeeded and has the Sanguine Arc. Pull back. Those unable to do so, drive your daggers into your hearts on my command. You... Impossible. Even if the fight against the fake vampire had taken its toll, Mother and her sword guards could not have fallen so easily. I know the legends of Windermere's sword, which no one could stop. The blade of light that struck down the spires, one of Victoria's two sharpest swords. I grew up listening to them. Why? How? I charge into the fog of blood, hearing only my accelerating heartbeat. Finally, I spy a figure. <clears throat> you have lost all sensation in your arms. Your guards are rooted. How do you feel now? Hmm. <sighs> Sarkas. He caught you. An instant of weakness, of disorder. Why? We do not understand. We find it regrettable. <clears throat> Hmm. She's finished. Let this great warrior savor the fading of life. Are you leaving? I have no interest in the inconsequential deaths that remain. One glance from the devil is enough to freeze my blood. But he does not kill me. This blood is a penny a gallon. What are you after? We are unsure. Hmm. The age of shame is coming to an end. Are you hurt? It does not matter. He disappears into the blood. You... You... Oh, there you are. The one who saw through us. He said we were losing our touch. How convincing was the last one? Is this good enough? Don't you dare wear her face! He smiles at me with mother's face. We must try. Then, with an identical sword, mother's sword, he impales his own chest. Sarkas! In my fury I try to charge, but my body refuses to move. We'll do better next time. He whispers in my ear, wearing my own face. Mother's sword is still in his chest. In my chest. He falls, then familiar blood witchcraft covers him, consuming him. After the blood boils and evaporates, it is as though nothing had ever happened. All I can do is pick up Mother's sword. I... I catch sight of Mother. The sound of fighting has stopped. The wind has calmed. The ship has stopped. I see blue hair on the ground. Mother is bleeding. Nothing. I can't see very well. Have they retreated? Mother! They're gone. Mother, I... I'll call for the doctors. You'll be fine. You're the Duke of Windermere. You're my mother. Wait here, I'll... I couldn't beat him. I can't believe it. 
Don't go, Delphine. Don't go. Let me... Look at you. Mother's body grows cold in my arms. I dare not let go. The sound of mother's heartbeat fades further and further away. Don't cry. I... I'm not crying, mother. I saw you sing, swing your sword, Elphine. Very good. You had injured your hand. Your grip. It was never right. I was too hasty. Mother, don't say any more. Mother gazes towards the horizon. Is that the direction of Londinium? Her eyes have always laid upon Victoria. I remember the direction your father left in. He had a surprise for you, one that we prepared long ago. Mother! Delphine, you... Uh, <coughs> I thought you would be taller. The clothes will be a bit loose. Just calm down, Delphine. The rain stops. Oh boy. Well, I know I said at the beginning that we were going to be covering stage 13-3 today and ending it here. But I didn't want to say it before, just not to... How to say this? Paint a picture of, oh shit, what the hell is happening on 13-3 that he's stopping here, in the middle of it. But, uh, yeah. We're gonna be stopping here. Multiple reasons. Uh, it does feel like a, you know, end of episode kind of thing. What just transpired. And also, for you guys, this video might have been... You know, the length that it is, I can't really tell right now until I render it. Uh, for me, this has been 10 hours, and uh, this... This cutscene... Um, I don't even want to say how many attempts uh, I went through. So, whatever you just heard is the attempt I stuck with. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, when you open the open the scene on this thing and the first thing you hear is they is that piano tune which immediately triggers every PTSD war imagery in front of you and post-war depression I'm like uh oh no why why are we doing this what is happening oh, oh, oh boy but look at that the sanguine arc is back doing sanguine arc things one of the Damazi is back and doing the Matsi things. So kinda kinda answering one of the questions that I put kinda literally we've literally answered two questions literally off the bat in this one chapter that I placed at the beginning of this thing. Uh well I definitely didn't have a bingo card for um Vindermare dying. That was um, Yeah. Good old Hypergriff, am I right? Hey, this is a cool looking mommy character. Yes, I've seen people comment on that. This is a cool looking mommy. How about playable? Hypergriff just... Taking a deep breath. <clears throat> How do we tell him? How do we tell him? Just show him? I... I guess. <laughs> oh boy. Well, this has been a scene to record, uh, so yeah, I need a break, I think you all need a break, uh, and, uh, well, you won't be waiting too long for the next part, it should be out in, like, two days from now anyway, and, uh, probably gonna be around the same length again. But yeah, anyway, I will put this into rendering, 
and uh, after he goes to YouTube, take a take a good deserved nap, because I definitely need it after that. Uh, and maybe you do as well, who the hell knows. <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Despite where I just left off the story, or where I'm leaving off the story for now, please consider leaving a like, to, like on this video. <laughs> it will help it out a lot, and me as well. And uh, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. There are memberships. Uh, thank you to the members. I don't even... Uh, I need a break. I need to lay down. Uh, when you read the scene once, it hits, but when you have to go through it multiple times, Woof. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for listening. If you're watching this live while uh, the horror banner, or rather the horror banner is still live, good luck on the polls. And um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Hope you have a fantastic day. Bye bye.